This video is brought to you by Tomb of Guys and Gags from Gooey Cube, an adventure homage and campaign setting honoring Gary Gygax. Brought to you by Luke Gygax and publisher Alphineas Goo. And this Kickstarter is in its last few days, so you want to act now so you don't miss out. The Tomb is a brutal, grim, dark dungeon crawl in the classic old school style. And the campaign setting, completely unique, featuring a number of old school luminaries as NPCs that you can encounter and interact with. The ghost of Garold Geisengax, Luke Geigax and his family, Peter Ackison, Mike Carr, Larry Elmore, Ed Greenwood, Errol Otis, plus me, Dan the Didactic. And we also contributed writing to this project. And if you've never seen them, Gooey Cube products are first rate. Here's a copy of their last box set. The Darkest Dream. These books are spiral bound so they lay flat on your table, slick pages, and first rate art made by humans. Pledge early and you get a ton of extra stuff. Link below. Deathbringer here. Subscribe to the channel and sign up for the Deathbringer RPG newsletter at the link below. Professor DM here. This channel is about homebrew D&D and other tabletop role-playing games. Angry Dwarf here to teach you about the difference between real ox and fake ox. Know your monsters! It could be the difference between life and death! Today we're taking a deep dive into what is perhaps the deadliest encounter in an official D&D product aside from that tilting floor in the original Tomb of Horrors. There's probably no module that's been more played than Gary Gygax's Keep on the Borderlands. This starter module is designed for levels 1 to 3, but there's one section of the dungeon, Cave B, the orc lair, that has proven to be a death trap for several of my groups of players. Most recently, five out of the nine players in my youth group bit the dust here. They split the party, so it was five and four, and the party of five were the ones that were killed, even though they were shouting for help, and the other half of the party decided to leave the dungeon instead. That's cold, even for me. But first, here's Angry Dwarf to talk to you about orcs and their strategies. There's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet with people calling these orcs. This is not an orc. This is an orc. Notice the pig head. Real orcs look like pigs. This is not an orc. This is an orc. Clans include the vile rune, broken bone, and evil eye. This is not an orc. This is a green elf. Real orcs don't have sexy abs. Real orcs look like something out of Jim Henson's worst nightmare. Seriously, how is this a movie for children? That's not an orc. This is an orc. This is not an orc. This is the Hulk. This is an orc. This is fake. This is real. This is fake. This is real. This is... I don't know what this is. This is an orc. Some people say orcs can join the party and be a friend. Don't believe them. Orcs don't want to be a friend. Orcs want to eat your face. Once I knew a first level wizard, fresh out of university, thought he knew everything. Let's talk to the orcs first, he said. Maybe they're peaceful orcs. They chopped off his head and used it as a hand puppet. How orcs attack. Orcs swarm in great numbers, surrounding their opponents. They lure adventurers deep into a room, then attack from the high through secret doors. Secret doors that can't be detected with passive perception because the PCs were already engaged in combat with other orcs. And orcs know to take out the spellcasters first. Anyone waving their hands is an obvious target. And orcs always finish off downed characters by taking off their heads. Where do you find the real orcs? What miniatures? Other world miniatures, dragon make miniatures, all make them. Links below. How to paint orcs. First, spray paint them black. Then, dry brush them light gray. Then use army painter speed paints. Use crusader skin for the flesh. For the clothes, use dark colors like hardened leather and rotting green. Highlight the tips of the ears and nose. Let it dry for 48 hours. Then dunk the model in army painter soft tone or strong tone quick shade. Wipe away the excess with an old brush. Let cure for 48 hours and it will turn rock hard and protect your rock from your player's uttered Cheeto licking fingers. Spray again with army painter anti-shine to get a matte finish. Now your rocks are ready for the table. For more tips, hit the like button and subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon to get bonus content. And sign up for the Deathbringer RPG newsletter at the links below. Thank you, Angry Dwarf. 
Now let's take a look at the text. Upon entering, the party will see the north wall is decorated with heads and skulls, human, elven, dwarven, in various stages of decay. These cheerful greetings are placed in niches that checker about 100 square feet of the wall. Now one of those heads is actually an orc guard poking his head through a canvas sheet. And unless the players inspect it carefully, which I've never seen a player do, that orc reports to the rest of the guards in room 8. The players have a choice. They can go left or right. If they go right, they'll hit room 7, the guard room with four orcs in it. In which case, the orcs from room 8 will sneak up behind. So a couple rounds after the characters have started fighting the orcs in room 7, they're surrounded and pinned by more orcs. But if the party chooses to go left without checking room 7, then the guards from room 7 will sneak up on them from behind, possibly pinning them in room 8. And if the party goes to room 9, the banquet hall, they run the risk of having both groups of orcs from 7 and 8 attack them from behind. Of course, I imagine that guards have some sort of horn they can blow to warn the other orcs. In which case, a dozen more orcs come from area 10. And if the king hears that horn and approaches from the north, now the party is entirely surrounded. Which is exactly what's happened several times I've run this encounter. The orcs can form a line across the room, splitting the party in half, preventing the clerics from casting healing word because they can't see the target, and they can't cast spare the dying or cure light wounds because they can't touch the target. And wizards don't have fighters to act as human meat shields. There are 21 total orcs in this cave. If you have a party of five, that's four orcs per character, and that means four times as many chances to score a critical hit. No matter what edition of D&D you play, I doubt characters are going to last two rounds before one goes down, and when they do, make sure the orcs take off their heads. These orcs didn't collect a wall of heads by letting adventurers make death saves. They are brutal. Play them that way. This encounter is especially lethal for four reasons. One, it allows the enemy to attack from multiple directions. Two, it hurts player synergy. They can't get to one another to heal or pass healing potions around. Three, swarms of weak monsters can be more dangerous because more rolls mean more opportunities to get a natural 20. Four, when players focus their attacks on one opponent, it takes all the damage. If a character does 20 hit points of damage on a monster with 100 hit points, it loses 20% of its hit points. But if they do 20 hit points on a monster with only 10 hit points, those extra 10 points of damage are lost. Attacking characters from multiple directions with a lot of low hit point enemies is potentially more dangerous than attacking characters directly with a large hit point enemy. All of which creates a potentially deadly encounter, especially if the dice go cold and break against the players. This game is tough but fair. Gygax telegraphs the danger by starting off by showing the wall of heads. It's a warning for players to be alert. Players will benefit by checking the hallways behind them, not leaving unexplored passages behind them, and forming a defensive circle with spellcasters in the center. These are all techniques this module was trying to teach. If you're interested in playing Keep in the Borderlands, Goodman Games has a 5e update that also includes the classic original module, which is compatible with old school Essential Shadow Dark and any D&D retro clone. For all these subtle elements make this module as deadly today as it was when I first played it back in 1980. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Share in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. May all your rolls be 20s. So Deathbringer, do you have any advice or strategies for players who are going into the Caves of Chaos? Yes. Kill the bard first. I don't understand. There's, there's no evil bards in the Caves of Chaos. The only bard would be a member of your own party. Perhaps I did not make myself clear. Kill the bard first. For more helpful tips, click on these videos and watch more Dungeon Craft.